Thank you for joining us for the Into Me I See podcast, brought to you by RPI Consultants. I am your host, Justin Braun. This is the podcast where we connect to answer a simple and compelling question. How can we work to improve professional health, performance, vitality, and outcomes by focusing on the quality of our relationships? Welcome to the episode, everyone. Today, we're joined by Mark Flores and two of RPI's marketing talents, Logan and Paul. Um, And we're here to talk about On the Turning Away, uh, a teacher's relationship with ambitious, soon-to-be college graduates. It's more than just preparation. So, Mark, would you like to kick us off with an opening reflection? We invite all of our guests to share something inspiring that kind of grounds down that that episode topic that we're here to talk about today absolutely uh so first and foremost thanks for having me as a guest uh for sure i I would not be here without logan and paul uh asking me to be a part of this podcast uh which is really at the foundation of what we're talking about in terms of building the relationship um you know as a professor as an educator uh with his or her students um, and that it goes beyond the classroom, and, and that's what we're seeing right now. Um, so I am a, a professor with the management faculty, um, or a faculty member with uh, the management department, as well as the business excellence department. Uh, I've been doing this since 2014. Um, I love what I do in terms of the teaching um, prof- professionally in my HR role. Um, I did a lot of training. Um, so that kind of got my feet wet with the transition into teaching. And I knew one, I wanted to give back to Towson specifically because it's my alum. I, I graduated in 2004. Uh, so I did some guest speaking spots for some actually current professors uh, with the course that I teach now. Um, and, uh, you know, through my love of training and doing the guest speaking spots um, for that particular course with uh, BizX 460, um, I fell in love with it. In fact, uh, that's the reason why I got my graduate degree, got my MBA, uh, really didn't need it. But in order to teach at uh, the higher education level, um, I, I needed to get my MBA. So I started in spring of 2014 um, and the rest of rest is history. Um, so I'm, I'm doing what I love and very blessed to do so. Solid. So, you're, so you didn't set out to become a college professor your your path led you to that point through relationships that you established as a student at Towson University? 100%. So I, I graduated with my undergrad uh, with a management degree. Um, and I said, adios, Towson. I don't want to see another paper. I don't want to see another Scantron. And it's funny because here I am, I'm literally in about two hours about to moderate uh, an exam. Um, and I'm, I, I have a uh, spring break ahead of me, but I, it's filled with grading papers. So I have like over a hundred papers to grade, uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't exchange it for the world. Um, I, again, I just, I love what I do here at Towson. It's amazing awesome. how like your mind shift changes. So yeah, I want to, I want to dig into some of the details of BizX 460, but yeah, just sure. to- just to put it in context, both Logan and then Paul were students in BizX Biz 460. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, in a sense, is a, is a feeder program to the RPI marketing department. And here we are on a podcast brought to you by RPI's marketing department, which is kind of an outgrowth of your course. So it's, <laughs> there's a lot of there's a few layers of inception as we go forth in the conversation. I just, I wanted to point that out. So everyone kind of has that context and that mm-hmm. mad and that magic, but bring it back for me, Paul, what, what really got you into teaching? Like what, what's the, what's the nucleus of that cell? Like what really, what really brings it out of you as a teacher? So as a teacher, it's, it's helping out the students in whatever way possible. So some students just need a little bit of guidance. Just, uh, you know, give me the basics, stick with the course um, and, and you know, check off the box for the credits that, you know, I'm here to, to earn. Uh, while there's other students, I know that I spent a lot of time. So specifically for BizX 460, 
Um, that class is in the evening so that students can take advantage of the internship hours, uh, such as with RPI, that are normally going to be during the day, right? So uh, the class is generally from 7 to 940. So, uh, you know, I've spent many hours, you know, until 10, 10, 10, you know, after 10 o'clock at night talking about, you know, how to, I'm not sure what to do, a lot of self-doubt, um, you know, uh, just uh, need more than just checking off the box in terms of credits, uh, some real guidance and support um, that uh, the students are, are looking for. Um, so I, I'm there too. Um, so it, my yeah. role really shifts depending on the student's needs. So you like the ability to kind of adapt to each student's needs in a, in a group setting, offering that course at night in such a way that you can kind of be a a connecting point for all those real life experiences and the 460 number i mean that's like that's a senior level course right like you're impacting and touching students that are about to be released into the wild um and and tailoring that to each individual and the, the ability to make an impact i'm hearing all that come through in your response mark yeah absolutely um, yeah I'm, let's talk i'm gonna invite logan to talk about that right like logan rewind the tape man what what was it like to start biz x 460 that course in conjunction it's kind of like the starter drug to rpi's marketing department right like how did yeah. that how did yeah. that play out for you back in the day take us there so um something that i think it would be important for anybody listening to this to know is that um biz x 60 is kind of in conjunction with an internship that happens and in the business department you have to have an internship in order to graduate from towson so that's a, it's a pretty stressful time for a lot of people trying to secure an internship. I know it was for me. Uh, I tried to pick a lot of passion projects. I wanted to work for the Chesapeake Bay uh, Foundation. I wanted to work for um, something in music since I was a music industry minor and previously a classical guitar minor. Um, I picked a lot of like music and environmental stuff that I was really into and nobody called me back. So uh, on our career services page on the Towson site, RPI was the first thing that popped up when I typed in marketing internship and uh, just so happened to be the only ones who called me back. Um, throughout, pretty much until I accepted the job, I was hardcore trying to find anything else to do because it did not look attractive to me on the surface. Um, but I was, I was very wrong, obviously, here seven years later. Um, and then, you know, as I went through this internship, I had BizX 460 with Mark, and we got to chat about it, and through other people sharing their experiences of their internship in the class, it really solidified my perspective on how lucky I was to be at RPI, and I liked sharing how cool RPI was with Mark. I liked kind of bragging a little bit to everybody else in the class, like, hey, we got a double kegerator and a liquor cabinet, whatever else, so... Um, uh, it, it was a lot of fun, and uh, and I even got a chance, probably the semester after I graduated, I went back and uh, and talked to Mark's students about about my experience at RPI and, and the uh, experience of having an internship and all that good stuff. So uh, it's definitely very tight knit in between in between the internship and, uh, and Mark's class. I remember what it was like, Logan, when when Bill interviewed for your you were our first intern. And, yeah. uh, and and he literally probably interviewed like 30 plus people for the position that you ended up in. <laughs> um, and I just remember that, you know, it's like when you know, you know. And I think we both kind of had that moment when when you came by my office during your interview and it was like Jerry Garcia poster. Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> that was that was what did it for me. That was that was when it kind of turned around in my mind. Of, All right. Maybe I could work here. This guy's got a Jerry Garcia poster on the wall. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think that that is an expression of our culture, not only, you know, the Grateful Dead and all their great music, but the Kegerator. And, and you know, it's uh, I, I remember the energy you brought. It was very fresh. It was very uh, it was very welcome. And uh, just a lot of humility that aligned with our values. And I remember, um, you know, brick by brick, day by day, you know, you've been making a contribution every day since for seven years. And it's been really amazing watching you grow. You're now a manager in our marketing department. Um, you're, you know, responsible for developing others and being a leader in our organization and helping us reach our audience with our message. And our audience is both 
future customers of RPI and also future employees of RPI, right? Yeah. And, and to your left, Paul, if you'd like to kind of talk about where you come into this picture and layer down in the inception cycle, like, what are you doing at RPI today? What's going on? So I was in a sort of similar boat to Logan and I was under a stressful situation of, I got to get BizX 460. I need to do an internship. I need to find something. And so I just started randomly applying to a bunch of jobs on LinkedIn. No one was getting back to me. And then finally one day, just RPI hit me back up and I came in for an interview or I talked on the phone with Logan and we bonded over music for a little bit. And then I came in and I was blown away just by the setting of the office and all the people who just seemed really eager and happy to be there. Just even in passing, the energy when you walk in through the door, it's just, it changes you in some way because you just see an environment where everyone values the work they do and the company they work with. And while we were having our interview with Logan and Bill, uh, they just, it was, it was really good banter. And they asked me a lot of valuable questions. And I like to think that I asked some valuable questions of them. And since then I've been interning here, love every mo moment of every day I work here. And going back to BizX 460, that coinciding with my internship during the first semester, I was in senior year. Uh, I got to, I got to tell all the stories about some of the things I got into. Flores was very shocked to hear some of the things that were positive about RPI, going back to the kegerator. <laughs> but it it just it makes me happy. So are you in BizX 460 right now? No, I finished that class last semester. So that just finished like last December. Mm -hmm. So you were in that course when when we conceived of this idea of this podcast mm -hmm. and you and you were invited to help make a creative contribution. Yeah. How cool is that? So that's cool. awesome. Yeah. All right. So Mark, bring it back to your course, BizX 460. I think you, you know, it's clear from Logan and Paul and how they fit in this whole conversation that that you're able to make an impact on on you know, young men and women that are kind of finding their way into the workforce. I understand you kind of put the, the, the intellectual kernel of your course is built around the seven habits of highly effective people. That that's kind of layered into the course curriculum. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? hundred uh, percent. So for our uh, listeners, seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. It's timeless. Actually, when I was an undergrad and I took 460, that was the book that we read. Um, uh, so it's one of those books that is not your traditional business book. Um, it, it talks a lot about um, just maximizing your, your potential your, uh, with yourself. And then it leads into other habits that can help you with the relationships with others. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love business in general is that the lessons that you learn in business can often translate to like life lessons. Um, and with, with the seven habits book, it's that that happy medium. Like you could talk about habit number one, which is being proactive. All right, how does being proactive help you in the business world? But also that could help you with your you know personal life. And if you're trying to, you know, establish a relationship with maybe a long lost friend or, or maybe, you know, secure that, that, um, interview, um, you know, what does it mean to take initiative? What does it mean to, you know, be responsible and take ownership and, and focus on the things that you could control on? Um, so the seven habits book plays a, a an important role in the course. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Sounds, sounds really important and really helpful. Um, what kind of relationship do you have to build with your students to be effective? Uh, for me, it's got to be an authentic one. And regardless of the course, um, I think that students are very intuitive to whether or not you're present um, or you're just there to just, you know, flip through the PowerPoint slides and go through the assignments uh, class by class. Uh, so for me, it's very important, uh, 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 important part of the course is actually the introductions. Uh, I want to know what your internships are, what your background is, um, and and start from there. Um, so I try my best to to get to know a, a, um, all my students as, as well as possible. Again, it's there's 30 plus students, so it's almost impossible to, to get everyone's story in depth, but that's where I'd like to start. 
Um, that way, the course is tailored to the overall class's experience. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, when you when you think about the college experience, or when I think about my college experience, it was really the first time where I got to practice being in community with people that were different than me, you know, like right. grade school, middle school, high school. I, I grew up in a pretty insulated, insular community, maybe a little more than others. Gross Point, Michigan, we called it the bubble. Um, but when I got into college, I was, you know, I had access and I had exposure to all these different people and different cultures. And I'd imagine that plays out, you know, in, in your course, how do oh. you, and, and I, I like what you said, you're, you're trying to, it's like the habits or the practice of relationship is making an authentic, authentic connection with each of your students. Um, how do you make those connections when you when your audience has such vastly different outcomes or vastly different backgrounds? Great uh, question, Justin. So first of all, I, I had a similar experience. Um, elementary school, middle school, high school, went to private school. Catholic. It was an all boys. Uh, so lo if you're local mm -hmm. to Maryland, Calvert Hall, that's where I went to high school. Um, so when I went to Towson, I'm like, wait a minute, I could go to school in my sweats. So I'm like, this is a co-ed situation. Uh, you know, you could come and go as you please. And I went from complete rigidity to complete, almost complete freedom, uh, which was again, just a huge eye opener as my, as an experience as a college student. Um, now flip the script in terms of teaching and you know how do you relate to so many different backgrounds you know every semester things change but I think what doesn't change is number one uh, as I mentioned before being authentic to your to yourself and, and your audience right so one element that I feel like almost every course that I come with is um to bring a sense of fun, which is why I love to hear about RPI and all the things that kind of go into the interview process and, and what kind of like make or break uh, the situation, particularly with Logan and Paul. And when you discuss RPI, um, just the, uh, the enthusiastic manner of which work is done, right? So that doesn't happen all the time. Um, and I think that translates well for my teaching style and that, you know what, if you're having at least the energy level is up. There's a certain level of fun. It's not going to be there all the time, but you could lean into that energy. Um, you could get the most out of, you know, the course or the work. Um, and then after that, it, it's just about focus and, uh, you know, having some form of uh, direction of where you want the course to go. But it starts with that energy. Um, and, and if you could bring it as a, as a professor, um, you could, again, you could bring out the most out of your students or, or your employees. That's awesome. So what I'm hearing you say is you kind of, you connect with all your students, regardless of background, based on an energy signature that you pick up. It's like, a, it, mm. it's an, it's an emotional appeal, right? If an, if an emotion is energy in motion, you're making that type of energetic connection and and when you see someone like Logan seven years ago or Paul today having a positive experience, you kind of, you recognize, you appreciate that energy. Um, oh, what do you, yeah, what, what do you do when, when your students are, are having a bummer of it? I mean, maybe not all internships go as well as, as the one we're talking about today. Like, how do you, how do you reflect that energy that's like, that's not, you know, that's not right for the student? How does that show up? So, so first of all, like that's, that's a skill within itself to pick up that energy. Some you know, people in general don't know that you're having a bad day. So you just, you still bring that energy. And that's just so, uh, at the very least, like irritating. If you're having a bad day, have you ever been around and you're, you're having a bad day and someone's just like happy go lucky and you're like, I'm just kind of leave me alone right now because I'm just not, you know, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Um, so as, as a professor, it could be the same group of students and oftentimes it is, yeah. uh, but it's coming after spring break, or maybe it's, you know, it's one of those weeks where, you know, the majority of the students have had a, a test and a presentation. So they're just, they're just not there. You, you have to kind of know and, and have a feel uh, and, and for the energy of your class. Um, and sometimes it's, it could be just specifically mm -hmm. some individuals so that, and then you let them have their space to do so. Um, but also have an outlet 
to say, look, if you want to talk about something after class, before class, let me know. Um, because sometimes it's completely out of character for, for a particular student. But getting to know your students as people and your their personalities, I think is a hallmark of a good good professor or even a good supervisor um, to get get to know your employees and their personalities and their mm. awesome. So let's pass it to Paul and pick up right there. Paul, what's it like, you know, being taught by someone that's in tune with your energy and and actually cares? Oh man. Flores is somewhat of an inspiration just for how he presents himself to everyone in the class and all the valuable skills that he's teaching just from his own personal experience and the experience he's gained from hearing others. Because one of the best parts about the class is we have frequent guest speakers who give insight into their particular job post Towson, or they give you career advice, such as how to use LinkedIn, salary negotiation, and a whole heap of other stuff that it just brings a whole extra level of value to that relationship and the skills that you learn that will uh, carry you through basically the rest of your life in some regard. Cool. How about you, Logan? What, what was it like being, you know, taught and led by someone who's connected to how you're showing up that day? Well, I think the thing that, that stood out to me the most and still does to this day is, uh, you know, I've always, I've always made connections with, uh, with teachers, with professors who kind of meet you where you are, right? And I think the college experience as a whole is, um, is learning how to uh, wrap your mind and your effort around your kind of freedom. Um, and pretty much for, you know, all of, all of grade school and the beginning of college and even through the end of college for some professors, um, you, you still feel like a subordinate with some people. But um, Mark, the thing I appreciated about your class was, you know, this was a, this was a give and take. This was a, a let me mm -hmm. help you out. I'm going to treat you like an, an adult because you are one. And, you know, the, the way that you were able to do that in class stood out to me in a way that, you know, I still think about seven years later. I agree. Well, that, that's, uh, that hits home. Uh, I, I appreciate uh, your comments. Keeps me going, keeps me motivated. Um, but it, it really, it, you know, you've, you've taken the baton and just ran with it. Like, just look at you guys. This is amazing. I mean, this is why I, I <laughs> this is why I play the game. <laughs> it's to see you guys grow up and, 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 you know, do what you do and become business leaders and, and being disruptors and being, yeah. um, you know, authentic to who you are too. Um, just the fact that I still, still see Logan with the, the Orioles cap, which is, you know, which is symbolic. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is awesome. It's, it's, you know, very fitting with opening day right around the corner. But there, there's small things. Again, there's kind of going back uh -huh. to the connections and, you know, how you remember people. Um, and it, that's that's uh, very cool to see that even though some things change, some mm -hmm. things uh, stay the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, that feels really good to see that happening and also almost participating in that symbiosis, right? Like when I started at RPI in 2008, there were maybe 10 or 12 of us and we were not a very diverse organization. We were just a bunch of dudes in our, in our early thirties that wanted to build a company, you know, and, and day by, and, and it had been around for, for several years before I showed up. Um, and you know, what we did brick by brick is we really bought into the idea of building a talent dense organization and hiring for personality and training for skill. Um, and Logan and Paul, you know, you guys are like living examples of that. Like we didn't, we didn't hire you seven years ago, Logan, because of your vast marketing experience. We didn't even know that you'd end up in the marketing department. We just knew that you, that you were fit within our organization and that, you know, we put faith in you as a person. And it's just so validating to see that relationship bear fruit over these years that now we're at a point where we're confident enough to, to let you hire an intern. Yeah. And, you know, Paul, it's like, it's so exciting to think of where this is all going to go and how this all connects back to your course. So thanks for calling that out, Mark. What advice would you give to other companies out there that might be listening to this, might even have a BizX 460 student in their internship program? 
what advice would you give to companies hiring someone coming out of your course that's on the turning away of their career? I think you hit the nail on the head. I, if you don't mind, I might steal it um, in terms of hiring for personality and training for the skill. Because I feel like in business, it's not rocket science. A lot of um, what we do in almost any industry can be taught, right? Uh, that you know, outside of the the college realm. Um, that, you know, certain companies also have their own way of doing things. So we'll teach you how to do X, Y, and Z. But what we can't teach you is the, the attitude, the personality that you come into the business with. Um, and I think that's going to be what separates a company that has a uh, cohesive culture and a company that just, you know, I, I guess, just sits on its reputation alone. Um, so for me i it's always digging into what the student is like and who their what their personality is like you know is this the type of person to you know uh come in and ask questions be proactive have generally a a, a positive attitude always willing to learn you know dig into questions of that nature um and sometimes it's also a, a gut feeling it, it's funny that you mentioned the jerry garcia poster but small things like that uh, can really uh, separate you from other candidates. You know, how well can you connect with uh, the, the employees that are already there? Um, and, and, you know, what, what goes beyond the technical skills? Um, yeah. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, sometimes you you're spend more time at work than you will with your own uh, you know, personal circle, you know, your, your friends and family. Um, so that, that's, that's a, I guess, overlooked point that sometimes it's, it's yes, mm -hmm. the resumes and test technical skills important. Um, but, uh, you know, look into and, and lean into, uh, who they are as people. And I think you'll find some good ones out there for sure. And I know RPI did Logan and Paul, you're, you're amazing. Thank you for, for calling that out, Mark. I mean, I think another one of the sentiments that comes through and hearing your comments is something that we do believe is, you know, we're all leaders, right? Like we might not all be leaders on every project team that we're a part of, but we all have a unique individual contribution. We, we, we try to create a space where everybody's contribution is valued. That doesn't mean they get to like call the shots, but for sure, you know, this podcast has, you know, creative fingerprints of both Logan and Paul and um, and we recognize that we're all leaders and, you know, I guess if I was to answer my own question of like, what advice would I give to somebody hiring a recent college graduate from your, your course, it would be to recognize that and to sort of, you know, promote the idea that, um, that leadership is not transactional, it's relational. Mm -hmm. right? And that's, uh, that's kind of what we're trying to talk about with this show is the, the ability to impact change through relationship. And, and I think all your stories and what you've shared today really drives that point home. So, so thanks for letting me mirror that in this conversation. Oh, I, I, I love that sentiment, uh, you know, just the ability to connect. And I, I think it, it's even that much harder through, you know, post COVID where physically you, you, we, we couldn't see each other. And, and now in 2023, we're starting to, to relearn mm -hmm. that skill and uh, just to kind of um, see how important relationships are. Um, now that, we, you know, there was a point in time where, you know, that was severely hindered. Um, it, because at the end of the day, I mean, you know, all the material success, even the profits, it, for me anyway, it's not on the top of my list in terms of priority. At the end of the day, I, 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 live for the relationships such as that I've made with Logan and Paul uh, and many other students and, and both personally and professionally when it's all said and done when I'm 80 years old like you know crawling at the Towson campus and to see you know Logan and they actually want to see me or you know Paul if I see him uh somewhere in Baltimore City uh, walking around like oh hey how you doing like I that's priceless to me that's priceless. You could keep the corner office. You could keep the company car. Give me that feedback and response. I'll, I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. I can so relate to that sentiment. I, 
I feel exactly the same way sometimes about this job that I thought I'd have for a year, 15 years ago. And here I am, you know, just one day at a time. 100%. Yeah. One connection. Yeah. That's right. That's really good. So Mark, how can, uh, how can our listeners get in touch with you? Well, I'm just, I'm at Towson University. So um, I, I, Still teach BizX 460, uh, spring, fall, and summer. Uh, but I'm also a full-time management faculty member. So if you decide to become um, an entrepreneurship major, HR major, uh, you'll probably see me somewhere along the way. But um, you know, as a Towson alumnus, uh, I'm I'm there for life as long as there there have me. Um, so if you need to find me, I'm, I'll be somewhere around Towson's campus, uh, crawling around. Super cool. Well, we're, we're closing in on perhaps the most important question of every episode, and it has to do with music. And I know you've got a real special treat in store. Yes. What's, uh, what's your outro send out song? So, you know, I thought about this, uh, you know, one of my, um, I guess, guilty pleasures is uh, watching professional wrestling. I still do. Um, but at the same time, uh, this particular oh. theme song um, also is played at graduations uh, around the world, uh, really? uh, high school and college. So uh, our uh, send off song is uh, Macho Man Randy Savage's Pomp and Circumstance graduation <laughs> song. Oh, yeah. Cream of the crop. Um, so uh, that's that was the song that I chose. Is it even possible to say that without using the Macho Man Savage voice? <laughs> it's <laughs> almost impossible. <laughs> now I'm going to be saying it for the rest of the day. Uh, uh, I think you're going to have fun too. You know, as in closing, uh, you know, it, you know, win or lose, uh, if you could find some enthusiasm or fun, uh, I think that's what we bring into the 460 class. I think when you, it's obvious with RPI. Anytime that I actually talk to uh, anyone that knows anything about RPI, let alone Logan and Paul, um, it, you kind of get that little twinkle in their eye. Uh, you know, yes, there's the kegerator, but just the culture and feel to it. So for anyone listening, you know, bring a sense of enth enthusiasm to what you do. I, I think that's a, that's a great start. Take it. Oh yeah! <laughs> I love it. Oh man, this is good fun, guys. I just had a quick thought. Sure. I still remember the first time I uh, I told you I was working at RPI and that I knew who Logan Miller was. Flores, you lit up like Christmas, and you were like, "Oh my God, you know Logan? Is he still wearing his Orioles hat?" <laughs> it, it's so true. I, like so many. Um, I, I I guess it was almost like um, uh, just. I thought about Logan as a student, but then now he's signing your papers. It was very surreal to me. So it just, it all kind of hit me in a way when you mentioned that. Um, so, and I'm so glad that you did because I, I didn't put two and two together. You know, there's so many internships, so many students, but when you, you mentioned that, um, again, it's just like connecting, it's like finding that puzzle piece and you're like, oh, I found it. It's there. And so now I'm connecting RPI to Logan, to you, Paul. Um, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. It really is. A lot of synchronicity there when I yes. was brainstorming with Paul about, you know, future guests for this show. You know, he said, you got to get Flores. You got to get Flores. I'm like, who's Flores? And here we are. There we are. Man. <laughs> Small intro. And it's been great working with uh, everyone here uh, to get this, uh, this episode up and running. Um, just uh, uh, I love what I'm admiring from afar with the work that you guys are doing. So uh, I look forward to to meeting uh, and being there uh, mm. uh, at RPI in your building. Heck yeah. We look forward to hosting you, Mark. Thanks for your That's contribution good. today. And uh, sure. You're and, welcome. Your, and your verse in the song. We'll get, we'll get Macho Man up on the playlist and, mm. uh, and we'll drop that in the notes of this episode for our listeners to click and, and listen. So love it. Love it. Awesome. It's, it's been great. This has been fun. Um, yeah. Thank you for, for having me. Thanks Mark. Great job. All right, take you. care. Good seeing you. Take care. Keep in touch. See you buddy. Bye-bye.